everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm showing Lord of the Rings, the adventure book game. This is from Ravensburger, and I think it's a Target exclusive for now. And no disclaimer for this one, I bought my own copy. My family and I recently played through the Princess Bride adventure book game, which was the first in this series. This one is the third, I believe. And we found it quick, accessible, and fun. It's not necessarily the crunchiest game, but this one seems to have a bit more going on, so I thought this would be at least worth filming. The scenarios are very fast, there's eight in the game, so I'm going to play through two or three, and then I'll have like a little mini review at the end. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So the adventure book series has big chunky books. This is not a bound book, it's like a big like kind of cardboard book. So there's one page for a scenario, so in this case you're gonna have eight. And they have the place you're moving around on here. You have individual characters from the story as miniatures or sometimes tokens. Uh, so here, it's a little tough to tell them apart. That's uh, my first complaint about the components. Uh, this red hobbit with an apple is Pippin. This yellow hobbit with some beer is Mary. So Pippin, Apple, Mary, Beer. Frodo has Sting, so he's a little bit easier, and he's blue. And then Samwise has nothing, and he's green. We've also got Gandalf the Grey over here and two black riders. Uh, this section on the left over here tells you how to set everything up. And the play of the game is controlled through these story cards. At the start of each turn, you get to move uh, up to two spaces. You can split that between two characters. You just move one person up to two. And what you're trying to accomplish, the core focus of each uh, chapter in the game, is to complete the challenges. Often they have to be completed in a linear order, although not always. And the key idea here is that no player controls any individual characters, so it's not like I'm Frodo, all of the players cooperatively can move them. And basically you are setting up the situations of the book. So like for this first challenge, keep it secret, keep it safe. It says Frodo and Gandalf must be on the hearth space in Bag End. Samwise must be on the road to the Shire, eavesdropping. And then we need to spend one card with this indicated icon, which is Insight. And that will complete this challenge. It'll give us some kind of bonus. And generally speaking, for all the chapters, the final challenge can't be completed until you've done everything else. And then you win the chapter. Now, to accomplish these challenges, you have several actions. First of all, you can discard any card to move a character one. That's in addition to the free movement you get at the start of each round. And you can also trade cards with other players. Now I'm playing solo and they have a solo variant where you have kind of a dummy hand of six cards that you can trade with as needed. So we'll see how that helps us out. At the end of your turn, you draw two more cards. You're going to have to discard down to six. You want to be using them. And then you draw a plot card from the plot deck, which is going to have a value one through 15. And based on which chapter you're in, it's going to do different things. In this scenario, it's uh, pretty much just moving the Black Riders. Now, one of the main ways to lose is to run out of time if the plot deck gets empty and you need to draw a card. Another ongoing way to lose, because this is a campaign, is uh, whenever you use one of these one ring cards, which act as wilds and can also be used to perform special chapter specific effects, like in this one, move a black rider. Whenever you use that, the corruption increases by one. Whenever it reaches one of these spaces, you have to draw one of these Eye of Sauron cards. And if it gets all the way to 15, then you lose the campaign. And this is tracked throughout the campaign. So if I get two corruption in chapter one, I'll start at two for chapter two. And then if I get to five for chapter two, I'll start at five for chapter three. So you do have some considerations of kind of how things grow and build over the entire campaign. But that's about it for the basics. Again, I'm going to show you uh, two or three chapters. They're pretty quick. And then I'll get into my review. All right, so this is chapter one. The adventure begins. As I'd mentioned, the Black Riders are hunting for uh, the Hobbits. They'll move through those plot cards around these black spaces, following this little like kind of shadow line, whereas we can only move along the white lines between spaces. If they ever get in the same space or move over a Hobbit, they're going to go to this little hiding spot space. But if we would ever need to put a second Hobbit on a hiding spot place, then we immediately lose. We got to make sure to keep that clear and not have the riders catch us too much. And that's about it for special rules. Uh, like I already said, for the first challenge, we got to get Frodo and Gandalf together talking and Sam over here on the road. For it comes in pints, we have to get all of the Hobbits in some of these orange Bree spaces to get drunk. And that'll unlock Aragorn. And then for we do not stop till nightfall, we have to get pretty much everybody. They say we can leave one hobbit behind. I don't know who that is. Maybe Fatty Bulger or something. Uh, we need to get everybody except one hobbit onto Weathertop and then have the Black Riders be next to us. And we win. I'm assuming this will be a pretty easy one since it's the first scenario, but anything is possible. So here's how I'll be presenting the hands during the playthrough just to kind of show. Um, I've got my stuff here. And then the stuff that's kind of turned is the dummy hand. So I've got two of the green adventure cards, one of the black insight cards, and one of the blue warfare cards. 
which is a pretty solid start because look, I need an insight right away. And then I need two adventure and an insight when we get to breathe, although it'll take a while to move everybody. And then a red courage and two warfare when we get to the final mission. And the dummy hand's not going to be too much use to me. I've got these three cards that are useless, although I might trade for them just to like discard them for extra movement. I've got a one ring card I'd prefer not to use if I can help it. I do have one courage though and an extra insight, so that's good. All right, so first turn, I can move up to two. So let's go ahead and have Frodo go to the hearth and Gandalf come away from the road. So how much movement do I have left? One more to get uh, Gandalf to the hearth and two to get Sam to the road to the Shire, which means it's not going to happen this turn, <laughs> basically. Uh, the two move next turn will be one less than I need. So I could go ahead and do one move now. And here, what I think I'll do, I'll use my one trade per turn. The Warfare I don't need until the very last challenge, so I'll trade for one of these uh, File of Galadriel mystery cards, and then I'll discard that to move a character one space. And I'll use it for uh, Frodo to invite Gandalf in. There we go. And now I'm set up for the two move to get Sam where he needs to be next round. All right, now I draw two more cards. Got another adventure and another insight. I don't need that much. And I finish up by drawing a plot card. Again, the game goes really quickly. Oh, it's a 15, which says move both Black Riders two spaces. And they always go clockwise, so that one's hanging out in Bree, and this one's kind of blocking my path, but that's not too much of a worry for now. And we go right into round two, Sam! Go check the road! And now we're going to go ahead and do Keep It Secret, Keep It Safe. So I'm going to spend one of the two insights in my hand. And it says, Reward. Each player draws one card from the story deck. Well, that's only me. And then remove Gandalf from the board, because he's uh, wandering off to be not useful for a long, long time. I drew another insight. Uh, geez. And I mark the chapter completed with that. All right, so my next goal is to get all four hobbits of the Prancing Pony. Um, yeesh. Yeah, they really have to go where the Black Riders are, don't they? Well, in any case, I want to do some movement because uh, I can only have six cards in my hand at the end of the round. And I've got five and I'm about to draw two. So let's go ahead and get rid of, I don't need more than two of these and more than one of these for the next challenge. Let's get rid of both of these for two movement. I definitely do not want to move a hobbit to the hiding spot on my own because three out of the 15 plot cards force a hobbit to go to the hiding spot, which means I would lose immediately. So for now, let's just keep it simple and have uh, Frodo and Sam meet up at the edge of the Shire. Then I draw two cards, oh, one ring and another warfare. Okay, I do need the warfare. I've actually got every card uh, that I need for challenges represented. So the one ring, just to talk about it again a little bit more, every time you discard it, you gain one corruption. Every time you use it as a wild, you gain one corruption. And you can use it for the One Ring ability, which is to move a Black Rider one space, but you still get a Corruption. Now, interestingly, in Solo, because they're supposed to kind of like tie up your hand, you could just trade them to the uh, Solo dummy hand and kind of put them out of sight, out of mind, which is what I might do. But I guess in a multiplayer game, uh, it would be a lot more interesting to kind of have these uh, filling up your hand and encouraging you to use them. Right, now, the plot card and 11 move either Black Rider two spaces. Um, Let's see. If I move this one here. It wouldn't be that tough for me to get like Mary or Pippin kind of around and past. Or do I unblock uh, Frodo and Sam? Well, the thing is, if I do that, then I've really got Bree kind of mostly blocked off. Yes, yeah, so we'll do this one. And all right, uh, for my free move, let's start with Pippin. He's the closest. So he's in the hiding spot. We're not going to leave him there. I'll go in and trade a one ring for a mystery. I'll discard that for another move. And then I need that, but there's another one in the dummy hand. I need both of those. I need that. Let's just do the one for now. That'll get him past the Black Rider, so he'll be in a safe spot. And now we got more rings to worry about. Okay, and we got a two for the plot. Ooh, which is actually good. Move any hobbit to the hiding spot. It's great when it's not going to lose you the game. Um, one, two, three, one, two. So we will save more space. Okay, uh, Frodo just ran ahead to the hiding spot in the tree. And now... Uh, he and Pippin should be pretty quick to get to the Prancing Pony. All right, so speaking of, let's have one, two for our moves. So they just have to be on orange spots. They can hang out where the Black Riders could grab them, um, which maybe I'll just have them do for now. Oh, no, that seems unwise. I should probably get some of them to the Prancing Pony. All right, so what am I doing here? I have an extra inset I don't need. I think, <laughs> again, this is a little bit of a weird wrinkle uh, to the game with specifically the dummy hand, just being able to, like, kind of foist off all your one rings and not use them. We'll see how much of an issue that is. I haven't actually played this one yet. So let's uh, discard the file for an extra movement and this extra insight for an extra movement. And with that, we get Frodo on to Bree and Mary down to Pippin's starting spot. So he's closer for a run. The Black Rider's still blocking up uh, Sam here. 
And wow, another ring. Okay, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> there's a lot of rings floating around. Okay, and a 13. Oh, let's move both of them two spaces, which is kind of good. I mean, Sam's got a nice clear shot now, although yikes. Okay, so there's only one more that would force me to move both of them. So there's a, uh, yeah, only one card out, left out of 15 that would get these guys, but that would immediately lose me the game. So I probably don't want to do that. Oh, I didn't even notice that there's like some safe spaces here we can go to. All right, so we got two moves. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's be safe, I guess. Well, I guess I only need to move one of them for now. And let's get Sam here. Maybe I should wait in case uh, I get that automatic hiding spot thing and move Pippin here. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm again running out of space here with all these rings. Um, get, okay, so we don't need this extra warfare. We don't really need this extra insight. So I can discard both of these, which will get Mary to here. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens from there. Get a 12. Move either Black Rider two spaces. So not that one. But now you uh, you cannot have them like move into or through each other. So if I got another card that forced me to move one of the Black Riders, which almost all the cards will, um, then I would have to move the one that's close to Bree. Hmm. If I want to be safe, I can just move everybody to the Prancing Pony and then nothing back can possibly happen. So yeah, let's maybe do that. So that's one, two free moves. And then I drew an extra um, adventure a minute ago. So we'll do that. And then I also have... Hmm, I mean, into Courage for the end. In a second, I'm going to need two Adventure and an Insight. Uh, so let's get rid of this extra Courage for another move. Now to move Sam to there. He's super safe, though, where he is right now. And all right. Should be safe now. A one. Ooh, perfect. Move any Hobbit to the hiding spot. That was excellent. Thank you for the free movement. So yeah, let's uh, let's go one, two. And we're already set up because they just need to be in the Iron Spaces. It comes in binds. Okay, so all four Hobbits must be in Iron Spaces in Bree. Okay, we need an Insight and two Adventure. So we'll do our trade first, get the insight we've been hanging on to over there. Yeah, you see what I mean about the one rings. We'll have to see how weird this is. Maybe I'll play on the next scenario dual-handed <laughs> just to get out of the weirdness. Uh, but yes, two adventure, one insight, clearing out our hand a lot. All right, and for this one, we place Aragorn at the Prancing Pony. So Strider's hanging out with us now. And we draw a card from the special deck. So this is cool. This is a separate deck. It gives you a uh, unique card. Well, not unique. I think it's like two copies of each. Here we've got Elven Cloaks. Do not draw a plot card this turn. Great. And the neat thing about these is not only do they give you cool powers, you can also discard them to move a character, by the way, or like trade them to the other players. Uh, not only do they give you this cool card, but this is a permanent addition to the story deck. So another way the campaign kind of grows, you'll get more and more of these special cards added to the deck, kind of changing up what's available in your plays each time you go. Now here's a question for me. I need to get four out of five of these people to weather top, which means I kind of want the Black Riders to move. So I think I'm going to discard this extra courage I drew and move. Yeah, just have everybody be safe getting drunk together. And then I'll hope the Black Riders get the heck out of here. Although time is pretty much on my side. I still have about half the deck to go through. But let's see. I got a four. Which means I can move either Black Rider one space. I have to pick this one. Ah, that's kind of the worst thing. Um, hmm. I guess I could send at least one person kind of going the long way around here to Weathertop. And then when that guy moves out of the way, we can rush other people. So yeah, let's do that. We'll start with uh, Strider's the only one who can't be teleported by the one out of three cards that are left for the hiding spot. So he'll go there. Oh, and we only lose if more than one Hobbit is in a hiding spot. So it won't hurt at all for uh, Strider to be an extra person there. Just to show you what I've drawn. Tons of Warfare. I only need two for the final challenge. So let's discard one. Move him to safety here. And then there's not much uh, reason to do anything else. We'll just stop there. And then I'm drawing up. I got a file of Galadriel and another one. Well, that's good. They're good for movement. Come on, Black Riders, get out of there. Five, let's move either Black Rider one space. All right, so yeah, I think that's definitely the way to go because now I can get some rushing going on. So let's get uh, Frodo first. So one, two, I've got uh, these two extra random files. So three, and let's get Strider closer. Four, he's still safe there. Oh, and Aragorn doesn't even care about the Black Riders. I just realized I should have read the rules better. He can move through them and they can move through him. So I should already like be, yeah, I mean, how many should I move him? One, two, three, four. He should already be at Weathertop, but whatever. We'll play my stake and keep it going. All right, and our next one is a nine. Move either Black Rider two spaces. No, that would be bad. So let's move this one. All right. Let's get another Hobbit there. Uh, we'll get Sam this time because we need to have Sam and Frodo, but we only need one of Merry and Pippin. I guess the other one will just keep getting drunk. And I've got some extra cards I don't need. That's two movements. So one, and now that I know that he's safe, two. And we're drawing a plot. Ooh, three. Move any Hobbit to the hiding spot. Um, One, two, three. 
One, two, three. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just uh, pip him. We like pip him the least, right? Mary, come over here. Okay, and then we should be able to win this turn. One, two. I need two more move. I'm going to use my don't draw plot card, and I'll use this random adventure card. Did not use any one ring. So again, that does make me question how well the solo mo mode works. But then I've got uh, two warfare and a courage for our final challenge. Let's show you that was two cards to move them. And uh, yes, I've got Aragorn, Frodo, Samwise, and at least one other Hobbit on Weathertop. Oh, and at least one Black Rider must be in one of the spaces next to Weathertop. Yay, that worked out. I didn't remember I had to do that. All of the challenges complete. Yes, they are, because I did do that one. So boom. So we've completed scenario one. There you go. Let's uh, jump in and do at least one more. And I'm going to switch to two-handing this one, because it's not really that different, honestly. And the fact that I didn't move the ring a single space when I had uh, six rings floating around in my two hands, that seems unrealistic. So yeah, I'm going <laughs> to try out two-handed for the next one to see how it goes. All right, so here we are with chapter two. doesn't take too long to set up. This is the Fellowship Forge, so we're at the Council of Elrond. And this one, we've got some more characters. We've got Frodo hanging out with Elrond. We've got Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn is back. Boromir is not represented by a miniature because, spoiler, he ain't around too long. I don't know what Gandalf's doing in this scenario either. I guess he's uh, drinking some elf uh, wine or something. And in this one, you've got these three tokens to represent the anger of the different factions, the men, the elves, and the dwarves. And that goes into each of the main challenges. So Aragorn needs to get to the man anger and spend two warfare to get rid of it. Gimli needs to get to the dwarf anger and spend two insight to get rid of it. Uh, Legolas needs to get to the elf anger and spend two mystery to get rid of it. And then Aragorn needs to get to Boromir to calm him down with two courage. And finally, every miniature needs to be on the ring space to pledge their uh, loyalty to Frodo for you have my sword at the end. But a few extra rules. In this one, no miniatures can share a space, so that's going to make things a little bit more challenging. And additionally, no miniatures can move through an anger if it does not match themselves. So like, for example, right now, it's impossible for Aragorn to calm down Boromir until Gimli has dealt with the dwarven anger first. And finally, uh, the plot cards, 5 through 15, so slightly more than two-thirds of a time, it's going to cause Elrond to move one space. He goes on this little uh, jaunt around the board here. And whenever he reaches the starting spot for a character, they have to come back. So like if I like put a lot of effort into getting Legolas to the elf anger and then Elrond's like, hey, what's up, Legolas? Then uh, <laughs> Legolas would teleport back and my efforts would be wasted. And additionally, if Elrond makes it all the way around to here, then we lose immediately, which means we don't really have 15 turns in this one, most likely. And the one ring power in this one is to push Elrond back one space. Ooh, so that actually is pretty big. Um, okay, so uh, let's jump in. And to show my two hands, I'm going to start with like the player on the left being the first player. We've got a ton of mystery, which is good for the elf anger quest, and two insight, which is good for the dwarf anger quest. And I kind of want to do that dwarf one first so that I can start maybe getting Aragorn to Boromir. Because the elf one, like I said, seems kind of dangerous to go for right away. Well, let's see, actually. One, two moves. Elrond probably moves here. Three, four, five moves. Oh, so actually with only a single extra move, we could take care of Legolas. And then we wouldn't care if Elrond comes over. Although, if we wait till Elrond passes him, then not only will he be able to solve the elf anger, but he'll also be just one away from the ring space. Oh, and by the way, no one can enter this until all the other challenges are complete. So again, they are going to be kind of like getting in each other's way and stuff. Eh. So yeah, let's try, let's try Gimli first. One, two. And he's not there yet, but here, we'll go ahead and trade for the once per turn thing like that. So now the other player is set up to solve that quest. We don't need to move Gimli any extra. So I think we're just going to stop there. And then see, yeah, this seems like it's going to be way more interesting. <laughs> Actually having the rings kind of taunting you to use them here. And the plot card, anything 1 through 4 does not move Elrond. Okay, that was cool. And then 5 through 15 does move him 1. All right, so now it's this player's turn. Let's get Gimli to his anger spot. What are we waiting for? Okay, Gimli is going to be on the dwarf anger counter. Uh, reward, so we spend 2 insight. He's got it. Remove the Dwarf Anger counter from the board and draw one card from the story deck. Good. Gimli got one Courage, although we still don't have any of the two Warfare we need for Aragorn to get rid of the men thing. And I guess we'll stop there. There's not much reason to move until we see how things are going. Gosh darn it. Stop giving me mysteries. I got enough. Although I did get one of the two Adventure. Oh no, I only need one Adventure at the end. So that's literally the only one I'll need the whole game. And okay, Elrond does move one now. Okay. So what should I try to do now? Um... I mean, Legolas is the next one I can get to, but again, he's like, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the fastest he can do is five. So there's pretty much no way I'll get there before Elrond just calls him back, which means I should probably start moving Aragorn toward Boromir. Yeah, I still don't have the swords I need for the other one. So let's uh, move Aragorn twice this time. 
And then I guess um, we don't need insight anymore. So let's discard an insight and a mystery. Let's move Gimli out of Aragorn's way. And now it'll be pretty easy for Aragorn to get the Boromir on the next player's turn. All right. And there we go. We got one of the two Warfare for the Men's Anger. Another dead insight card. And 15. Elrond is moving again. He's showing it up with the Elves. Now, it does say when he enters a space with a character, they teleport back. So I think we could freely move uh, Legolas now, and it wouldn't hurt at all. But let's go ahead and do the obvious thing and do two like that. Now, I guess I'll use the ring. I don't have uh, the two courage. I only have one, and I don't want to wait too long. So sure. All right, here we go. Our first corruption. Once we've used our first three corruption, we'll have to draw one of these Eye of Sauron cards. Oh, whoopsie. I'm not even there yet. Uh, let's use one of these mystery. We have so much of them. That'll move him here, and then we're doing the uh, the two courage for that. So it says, Ergo must be in Boromir space. Draw one card from the special deck. There we go. What have we got? Elven Cloak. Oh, dude, we're getting a lot of these. Do not draw a plot card this turn. That'll actually be pretty darn useful in this scenario. Oh, another ring. Okay, so we're not going to use it yet. Okay, and nine. Elrond moves again, which means he's about to suck Gimli back. Um, all right. We've definitely got the Elven stuff, so let's start moving Elves. So... We'll have Legolas go. One, two. Oh, and actually, it'll be helpful when Gimli gets sucked back, because then Legolas will be able to go through here, because remember, he can't go through the man anger space. Although, hmm, he's got too many cards. I don't need this anymore. And I only need two of the mysteries, and I can trade one to the other player next turn. So let's go ahead and do two moves, so that we can draw up to six. Um, an Aragorn move here is good, because now he's one away from where he needs to be, although he actually has to get to the anger. And then Legolas go in here, so now he's within... Two of there, assuming Elrond moves. We're hoping he does. And yes, okay, good. We're happy about that. So Gimli is back. Um, and <laughs> we're going to keep on going. So we'll start with Legolas double moving. And then, okay, we need to trade. Let's give them one of these feats. We both have one. And then they'll spend the two mystery. Okay, so the elf anger is gone. Only one more left. And remove the elf. Uh, and then we draw one card from the story deck. Cool. Oh, gosh, I just remembered Frodo has to get all the way over here. <laughs> okay, um, so let's, uh, before we finish this turn, let's discard this Courage we don't need anymore to uh, move Legolas out of the way so Aragorn can run in. That kind of worked out perfectly because, look, this person's got two Warfare saved up. So those are just free moves. Good. You're going to need a lot to get Frodo there. Oh, Elrond doesn't move. That's okay. That's actually good for me. Maybe we can try to win before Aragorn ever gets sucked back. So we'll go over here and uh, have this player play two Warfare to get rid of Men Anger, which gets us two story cards. Cool. All right, so now we can actually go in here. And Legolas and Aragorn are very quick to do it, although Aragorn might get sucked back later. We'll probably use that card that lets us not move plot. Um, so this character has at least two useless cards. So let's go into start moving Frodo the long path around. Oh, Lord, look what I drew. Ooh, good, though. Elven Cloaks. That'll help out a ton. But, yeah, this <laughs> is a lot. Uh, hold on. Oh, Elrond does not move again? Are you kidding me, Gabe? Thank you. That's a gift right there. That's like all of them, right? One through four doesn't move him. One, two, or two. Yeah, so there's a single one left, four. But pretty much every other card will move him. But not for a while if I got these cloaks to help me. All right, so let's go ahead and get Legolas out of the way so Gimli can go. That's our free move. And let's play Elven Cloaks to not draw a plot card this turn. And they've got three non-ring cards, because we don't want to use the rings if we can help it. Um, let's go and get Aragorn in here. Well, I guess we'll save him for the end, because he's the only one who could still get sucked back. So we'll get, I don't know, Legolas here. And we're getting good. Good. Those are not rings. I like that. And uh, all right, we don't draw a plot card, so that's great. So now it's the other player's turn. We'll move Gimli up. Frodo over one. Let's use this faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five it is. But then we need to get Aragorn out of the way. So this player will play an Elven Cloak to not have to uh, <laughs> draw a plot card. And then, oh my gosh, here, they'll, they'll trade <laughs> this player for like a real card. Oh, we do need a green to finish, but I think we're pretty safe. So let's discard two of them. So we'll get Aragorn in. All right, cool. I think we can win next turn. And then, okay, yay, real cards. And we don't draw a plot card. So yeah, this should be it. Um, trade them. They're going to discard this for a move and use this for the challenge. I'll show you on the board in a second. Because, yeah, we get two free move. The discarded card for that. And then the challenge, that's all they need. We complete this chapter. Woo! Get out of here, Elrond. You were far too kind. All right, you know what? I think we got time. Let's, let's go to Moria, right? You want to see that one. <laughs> and here we go. Scenario three, the last one we're going to play today. This is the Mines of Moria. We've got uh, Frodo and all the fighters here. The other hobbits are just, I guess, tailing along. 
And Gandalf the Grey starts one space in front of us. And this time you've got a special track representing the bridge of Khazad-dûm. The Balrog looks like it's going to be moving along about half the time with the plot deck. And we lose if he makes it to this spot. So not even the leftmost spot, but just this spot. Then we've got these goblins. They'll be popping out here. A Frodo cannot enter a space with a goblin. One of the fighters has to. And when you do, you'll flip them over and they'll have one of the icons. You have to uh, spend a matching story card to defeat them. To hurt the cave troll, we have to get two of the fighters uh, on adjacent spaces next to one of these tokens. And then play a warfare card to cover it up. And I think one of the quests is to kill the uh, troll completely with that. And yeah, as for the bridge, once Gandalf is here, we can spend the indicated uh, icons to move him along the bridge. And he, once the uh, Balrog and Gandalf meet each other, it's kind of like a tug of war. So like if they're here, then if Gandalf spends two uh, mystery, he'll push the Balrog. If the Balrog advances from the plot deck, he'll push Gandalf. Uh, and anyway, I think we just have to keep them kind of fighting on the bridge until we get to the end. And just double check, make sure I have all these right. Okay, so speak, friend, and enter. Gandalf and Frodo must be on the doors of Durin. It's pretty easy. Play any two matching story cards. Okay. Then clear a path. The first challenge must be completed. Well, duh. <laughs> there must be at least four goblins on the defeated goblin tracks. So we got to kill at least four of them. And then, ooh, we have to have all four wounds on the cave troll. And uh, two of the plot cards will heal the cave troll. So hopefully we don't get those at the wrong time. And then once we've done that, Gandalf of the Balrog must be on the same space. That'll be pretty easy. Frodo, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli must be on the exit space. Everything else has to be completed. And then we got to play those. Okay, cool. So this uh, seems pretty uh, straightforward, although definitely more interesting than the last ones. Just to show my hands, are we surprised that Mike got a ton of mystery? <laughs> I'm a mysterious guy. So yeah, uh, <laughs> mystering it up. But that works out well since we need some kind of pair for speak, friend, and enter. So for our free movement, let's get Gandalf on the doors and also Frodo one away from them. Then I'm going to spend one mystery to get Frodo with Gandalf, and the other two, I'm just going to clear it out this turn. It's speak, friend, and enter. Boom. Oh, and I just get two cards from the story deck. Nice. One ring, travel, and then I'll do my regular draw at the end of the turn. Good warfare for the, uh, the cave troll. Another insight, which I guess might be needed for a goblin. And what we get? A two, which is nothing happens. I wish it had been a six or a seven, because that would have gotten rid of one of the potential heals for the cave troll for no effect. But you'll see the Balrog moves on everything eight and above. Twice we'll add more goblins that'll just kind of uh, fill up the escape route and make it tougher for Frodo to get it through there. And uh, twice the cave troll will try to heal. But if he's already dead by then, that won't matter. All right, coming around to player two's turn. Um, at some point, I want to get Gandalf up there. And we do have the cards to start him off on the track. But I'd rather start finding out what I need to do for goblins. So let's, uh, let's move Aragorn up first. All the fighters are kind of the same. And then I would say there's no hurry. So let's just stop there and see what we draw. Okay, we got a ton of... Whoa, we got so much warfare to kill the uh, troll. That's good. Now, come on, give me like a six or seven. Darn it. Okay, Balrog moves one. Definitely have to get Gandalf up there to oppose him at some point. All right, so I go again. So um, only Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli can enter space for the goblin when they do turn it over. All right, so this is one move. Okay, this is good. The player has one of those. And then let's start getting another fighter over to start doing the cave troll. Gimli seems like a good guy. And I'll go ahead and kill the goblin on Aragorn space. And these do not come back out. There's only two cards that will spawn the extra. So there's uh, six goblins total. There's only two cards that will spawn the extra ones. We had to kill how many? Four goblins. Okay, so we're a quarter of the way there. And again, I think it's okay to just save up, right? Uh, I'm sure we'll need that for a goblin. Oh, but probably not two of them. And nothing happens again. Okay. Although again, I'm kind of hating that nothing happens when I want to know if I'm going to need to kill the troll twice. Okay, so I move Gimli up. Or no, let's not do that, because I want to see what we need. All right, so second move, we'll move Aragorn up. And it's a Courage, which the other player has. Oh, but duh, I can just trade. And here, you know, I might get Gandalf onto the track next turn. So let's give him, sorry, we're over here. Give him the uh, Mystery, give him the Courage, and then he'll discard it to kill the Goblin. Goblin's got no chance. So that's two out of four. Okay, and I've still got too many cards. I'm a little bit loath to use the Warfares, because I know I'll need them for the Troll. So, okay. I'm sure we'll draw another one of these at some point when we need it. We'll discard that. And I guess move Gimli? No, let's move Let's move Gan. Well, yeah, let's get Gimli up and ready to fight the troll with Aragorn. Just again, hope we don't get one of the healing cards right away. Because now we can try to like sort of rush the killing of the troll if we want to. Okay, we got a bunch more courage. Not sure if we'll need it. Uh, 13. The Balrog moves again. Slow your roll there, Balrog. All right, so now we get uh, two moves. So let's get Gandalf here so he's ready to jump on the bridge and maybe start working Legolas over. Sure. This player is going to do um, an insight and a mystery. So Gandalf's now on the bridge, although he's not actually stopping the Balrog. We need to, like, start pushing that way. 
By the way, the one ring effect in this one is to just move Gandalf one space, potentially pushing the Balrog with him. So we might need that if things get dire. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance. <laughs> it might get wasted, but I'm going to uh, wound the cave troll. Because now if we can get like Legolas over here, for example, we can do a bunch more. We'll stop there. Another one ring. Ooh, and our elven cloaks, but can't play it right now. Nine, Balrog moves. Okay, definitely play that elven cloak soon, though. All right, um, so two moves. So that's Frodo. Going to go one, two with Legolas. Discard one of this player's extra courages for a third move. Okay, we don't have a, uh, a foot to defeat that guy right now. Okay, and then this guy's going to do a warfare to uh, wound the troll again. Oh, and now if I can just get one, two. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, this is good. This is good. Okay, I'm going to, just to make sure I kill the troll, I'm going to do my one trade like that. And I'm going to play Elven Cloaks and not draw a card this turn. And then with the movement, I'll be able to give them another Warfare and finish off the troll, as you'll see in a second. Oh, although I just got more Warfare and Courage anyway. So not drawing a card. And here's the key part. So I'm going to do, um, what do I need? I guess like one, two. Oh man, another foot. Um, well, I don't necessarily need to kill that goblin because some more might spawn over here, but I definitely probably want to kill that one. But here we go. Let's spread out the <laughs> ring love. So I'm going to trade them for their Warfare and then boom, boom, double Warfare for that and that. So they have a cave troll. Um, reward, draw one card from the special deck. Cool, get out of here. I guess we don't need to worry about these anymore. Let's see, great eagle. Move each character up to one space each. That is a great card, I love that. So what we gotta do now is get Gandalf far enough to meet the Balrog, and then, oh, we still need to kill that goblin and at least one more if they spawn, and then get everybody to the exit, okay. But for now, we'll slow down. Ooh, good. That's two insight. That we need that to move Gandalf to the next spot. Yes, and that's to kill a, a goblin. That's great. And come on, don't move the Balrog. Darn it. Move the Balrog. Okay, this is a little bit dire here, people. Um, <laughs> if the next card is a Balrog card, we might lose here. But we... Okay. Mm, could use a lot of rings. So the thing is, if you lose a scenario, you just have to replay it. I mean, what are my chances here? I just checked. Four cards have come out for the Balrog. And only two non-Balrog cards. What is that? 8 to 15 is 8 cards. So half of the Balrog cards. And then, so there are 5 uh, non-Balrog cards and 4 Balrog cards left. So we have a slightly better chance that the Balrog won't move this turn. Slightly. All right, so I just got to believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Um, let's give them a horn. I don't know. Discard this to kill the goblin on Legolas. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't get two free moves. Let's move... Uh, Frodo and Aragorn, I don't know. Okay, so then we'll do that. So we need to kill one more goblin, and none have spawned here yet. Okay, and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pray to God. Okay, that's good. We can kill the last uh, goblin with that. Okay, that we don't really need. Please don't be... Don't be high. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, what is this? Place, ooh, a goblin on the escape route. That, that works fine. So anywhere along here... Um, I may as well just put it here, right? So we can easily get Legolas onto it. Okay, now we get two moves. So let's have Legolas find out what we need for him. A horn, we got a ton of those. And we'll move uh, them one. Okay, but now I gotta try to push the Balrog or something. Okay, so I am gonna probably take <laughs> some corruption here. Okay, I'll play the horn. Um, so that gets us our fourth goblin. Ooh, we get a card from the special deck. Give me something good. Wisdom of Elrond. Choose a player to draw two cards from the story deck. Okay. So all we gotta do is get everyone to the exit, and get them to the same spot. Well, to that end, let's start out with two insight. No, what they I'm going to have myself draw two cards. Maybe I'll get lucky and get some mystery. Ah, uh, darn it. I got one, but not both. So I'm definitely going to need to use at least... Oh, man. Am I going to take two corruption this turn? That's okay. Let's go ahead and play the Great Eagle. So that moves everybody. One space. Uh, so we're definitely not there yet. Yeah, then I kind of hate to do this, but I'm going to take two corruption to go one, two. Only way I can make sure the Balrog won't lose us the game immediately. Oh, crud. That gets us our first Eye of Sauron. Each player discards one story card if able. Okay, and that's removed from the game. So we'll never draw that one again. Even if this got pushed backwards, which apparently some effects can do, you won't resolve the the one you've already done before. All right, so for the final thing, we need, what is it? A green, a red, and a blue. So we don't need the mystery. Well, yeah, the next spot with Gandalf is two mystery, but that seems unlikely to matter. And then for them, green, red, blue. We got a lot of blue. Let's discard that. All right, now let's see. Uh, gosh, oh, Lord. Okay. Um, <laughs> rings galore. And yep, the Balrog's moving one. So he's taking Gandalf with him. We are one more from disaster. And we have no insight. I should have been paying more attention to that. Okay, but we get to move twice. So let's see. Frodo's the only one who can be uh, like annoyed by goblins. So let's get him to the exit first. That way, if the last goblin pops out, we won't care. 
Yeah, I think uh, second player's going to have to use a ring to push back again. Um, there we go. Yeah, it was so uncorrupt, and now it's all coming back. Okay, and then, gosh, we need all three of these cards. The only one we don't need is the ring itself, so I guess we'll just finish the turn there. There's the insight. There's a mystery. Ah, but I need two of any of those things. Okay, come on, something. There we go. Nothing happens. -hoo 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 -hoo. All right, can you guys please run and like jump along falling pillars and stuff a little faster? Okay, Frodo is safe, so Goblin Spawn won't matter. Oh, we haven't got either of the heal the troll cards. Where are those to help me out? And right, this player's got an extra horn. There we go. So a couple more turns. A couple more turns. Come on. Good. Just give me not rings. That's, ooh, now we can actually, yes, good. Now we can move Gandalf with the double insight if the Balrog moves six. Cave Troll recovers. Yay! <laughs> okay, fabulous, fabulous. We are almost there. We need, uh, what, six more moves. All right. Ooh, but wait. We want both those to move Gandalf, but he hasn't, the Balrog hasn't moved him yet to make it necessary. I need the, okay, I don't need this. So I'll definitely do an extra move with that. And then we don't both need courage, so I'll do a courage. I just want to be able to draw two cards. Uh, boop. Okay. All right, it took some corruption, but I think we're going to make it. Um, we don't... Okay, those are useless. And go ahead and move, Balrog. It'll just give me something to do with my insight. Yep. All right, so Balrog and Gandalf move there. Oh, that's right. We get to... Okay, so we just need to move twice. But first, let's give them that so they have everything we need for the final challenge. They've got two insight. Boom. And yeah, now we'll be 100% safe. We'll stop there. That should be the last plot card of four. Place a goblin. Okay, there they are. And <laughs> final two free moves gets Legolas there. And then what is it? Adventure, courage, warfare. Boom, done it. You shall not pass. Okay, and uh, <laughs> we all win. But not without cost. We got five more chapters to go through, people. And we are, yeah, almost a third of the way to our own destruction. There you go. Those were the uh, first three scenarios. If you want to see the rest. Next, we have the Fellowship splitting. Boromir getting killed. Then we have uh, the Ents attacking Isengard, putting out fires and stuff. Battle of Helm's Deep. Was Haldir there in the book? It's definitely based on the movies. Like, the pictures are kind of RT'd up versions of famous movie stills and stuff. But yeah, we got the Battle of Helm's Deep. Then Shelob's Lair with Gollum, Frodo, and Sam. And finally, the Battle of the Pelennor Fields and the Black Gate and Destroying the Ring all combined into one big scenario. This one looks more complicated. But let's get into my thoughts on this one. So first, talking about the uh, storybook series overall. Again, I played this one in The Princess Bride. I think the core mechanics are wonderfully accessible. I've played it with my 10-year-old, my 7-year-old, my wife. They've all enjoyed it. The simplicity of looking at icons, uh, using them of just flipping these plot cards. You know, as long as you have one player who knows how to do the setup or knows how to uh, run the chapters, you should be good. Although I will note, my son with the Princess Bride one woke up one morning early and set up the entire uh, game for the Fire Swamp himself and played it. So clearly it's uh, not even that... Ch I mean, he is a good reader for a 10-year-old. But uh, yeah, I think the game is very accessible, very easy to get into. The scenarios do have some necessary sameness because the mechanics are so simplistic, but I think in this one especially, maybe even better than The Princess Bride, uh, they have some nice, like, kind of thematic and mechanical differences. Like, you know, having the uh, Black Riders block up your movement here. This one was very much a movement optimization puzzle with people not being able to be in the same space, whereas this one was a little bit more interesting with kind of, like, management of your icons, defeating orcs, and moving Gandalf. So they all have pretty cool things going on. Again, it's not a heavy game. <laughs> Don't go into this as, like, a, you know, your main game for your heavy gamer group for the night. They're probably not going to be satisfied. But yeah, I think the core mechanics are cool. And I got to say, I love this was not in The Princess Bride. And I doubt it's in The Wizard of Oz one, the second entry in the series either. I love these rings and the mechanics there because basically you can make sure you win any scenario you want to if you just spam rings. But uh, thematically and mechanically, that's going to make you lose the campaign because you'll turn uh, to the dark side. So <laughs> I think that's great. I like how they kind of muck up your uh, hand and force you to think about using them. Now, of course, that and other elements in the game, like how the plot cards come out, can lead to some swinginess and uh, luck. But each chapter takes like 20 minutes to play. So if you lose one and have to play it again or just goes terribly, you know, whatever. Just uh, set it up again. Good game and uh, roll with it. I also like how the secret cards kind of go into your deck and give you kind of campaign growth in a way. It's pretty minor, but it does feel cool and it does give a bit more replay because honestly, there isn't a ton of replay. Like you are going to do sort of similar things in each scenario. Um, but these give a little bit more replay because you'll have like different uh, options, like having a ton of elven cloaks in this campaign might be different if I get like a ton of character movement in the next one. 
Now, some quibbles, if any. Um, I personally did not like... I don't think the Princess Bride one had the official solo variant where you have a dummy hand of six. But with the ring mechanic, I definitely do not like it here. I... I certainly enjoyed scenario two and three with two-handed play, which as you saw is super, super easy. (laughs) I much enjoyed that as opposed to the dummy hand play in the first scenario. So otherwise it just becomes too easy to kind of like stack up all the rings in one hand. And I think it's more interesting to have to deal with them. Also, if I'm looking for things to nitpick, uh, the card quality is pretty poor. Um, If we're going to play this enough, especially with my kids, I might leave the cards because... Yeah, they are like, (laughs) they are thin, they feel like they'll get damaged easily, and they are not easy to like handle and shuffle. And then again, just one minor gripe if I'm looking for one. Um, In the uh, Princess Bride one, they had like their names printed on the characters, but for some reason these ones don't. So it's like a little annoying to remember that Sam is the green one holding nothing, Pippin's the red one holding an apple, and Mary's the yellow one holding beer. I just wish they had made that a little bit more obvious. Now, so far it hasn't mattered too much, but later on, like with the Ents and the Pelinor Fields and stuff, I think... Well, actually, I guess there won't matter too much either, right? Because probably Mary and Pippin are doing their thing and Frodo and Sam are doing theirs. But yeah, it's just a minor gripe component-wise. But yeah, this one is great. I think it's definitely a bit more uh, crunchy than the Princess Bride one that I played. A bit more of a gamer version, but still very accessible. Uh, Princess Bride one, it would be more of a mixed recommendation. This one, I think, is really fun. So if you want like a lightweight accessible family game. If you're a fan of the Lord of the Rings movies or the book series, I think this one is pretty much a winner. So thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.